Kate and Meghan worked hard to put on a convincing display of friendship on Christmas Day, by using tactics favored by the world's leading politicians. After rumors of sang Freud have swirled around the two duchesses, the Christmas Day walk to church provided the perfect opportunity for them to put on a display of festive unity, and they didn't disappoint, according to a leading body language expert. The Duchess of Cambridge, 36, and the Duchess of Sussex, 37, appeared tactile, laughing and joking as they walked side by side with their husbands, but was it merely an award-winning performance? According to expert Judy James, regardless of how the pair actually get on behind royal doors, there was clearly a concerted effort to show a Yuletide united front, and it is actually William and Harry's apparent lack of ease that we should be more concerned about. Of Kate and Meghan, James says, it reminds me of political body language. The kind of thing politicians do when they're walking with other heads of state and want to show some signs of rapport or unity. The Queen and Prince Charles allegedly made it clear that any rift between the two duchesses must be kept out of the public eye as they arrived together at the St. Mary Magdalene Church. Their body language spoke volumes about how the two women really feel, says James. They're walking in step, and there's enough mirroring to suggest like-mindedness too. Kate has her left hand raised at the same time as Meghan, they're both gesticulating in an over-congruent way to show they're having a conversation. It looks performed, they're possibly trying a bit too hard. Despite the sisters-in-law appearing to grin throughout the short walk to the festive service, Kate wore a suppressed smile, says James. Kate's mouth is in quite a suppressed position. Normally, Kate wears a classic perfect smile. Here, she looks slightly amused by what's happening. It looks like they're almost sharing a joke that they've got to perform this friendship routine. Royal fans should worry more about how the two princes reacted, saying the tie signs including brotherly glances were absent and they appeared to wear fixed grins throughout, a world away from their usual relaxed demeanor. James says, Kate is becoming a lot stronger in the royal family as the queen gets older. She's showing a degree of dominance by moving away from William in these images, last year she held his hand. This year, She's created a space between herself and her husband so she can get closer to Meghan. She's taken the diplomatic role here. By contrast, Meghan is very much holding on to Prince Harry's arm. The Queen allegedly told Kate and pregnant Meghan to put their differences aside by the time they sat down to watch her speech along with the rest of the nation at 3 p.m. on BBC. It comes as there have been rumors swirling for months of a rift between Meghan and other royals. Speculations surrounding the feud surfaced when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex announced they were moving out of Kensington Palace to live in Frogmore House in Windsor. There were also reports of a falling out between Meghan and Kate during Princess Charlotte's bridesmaid dress fitting before the royal wedding earlier this year. It was also claimed that Prince William told the Queen that he did not think Meghan was a suitable wife for his brother. The report to come after it was suggested that the Queen was eager to offer her support to pregnant Meghan to heal the rift with Kate. A source told the Sunday Times that courtiers were eager to urge Meghan to seek advice from the monarch. Her Majesty has seen it all and could offer the Duchess some helpful advice at the moment, an insider said. Meghan would do well to nurture that relationship and pop over for the occasional cup of tea with the Queen. That is what Sophie Wessex has quietly done so well. It was hinted earlier this month that the Cambridges would spend the day with the Middleton family in Berkshire, and Harry and Meghan would spend it with the Queen. However Kensington Palace later confirmed they would be celebrating the day together in what was a show of solidarity between the royals. The royals were led by Prince Charles to the church at the Norfolk estate, following by his sons and their wives and the rest of the family. Meghan and Kate were given armfuls of bouquets by well-wishers as they went on a brief walkabout after the service with their husbands. Kate chatted to Jill Lee, from Cambridge, who has watched the royals attend church on Christmas Day a number of times. She said, I said to Kate were the children up early and she said very early, but it was lovely to see their faces. The 71-year-old, a retired seamstress, kissed Harry on the cheek a few years ago when he left church but this year he declined the offer, because of Meghan. She said, I said to Harry I can't kiss you this year, can I? And he said no and pointed to his wife. 
After the morning service at the Church of St. Mary Magdalene on the royal estate is a traditional event where they greet well-wishers. Back at the house, lunch is prepared by their staff and served at 1 p.m., and the royals indulge in a giant turkey, reared at Sandringham. The queen sometimes quietly leaves the room and lets her family watch the national address by themselves, as she views it alone to see how it comes across. Boxing Day when the royals enjoy a breakfast buffet of kedgeri, bacon and eggs, often involves outdoor pursuits such as shooting, riding and walking. Kensington Palace have not commented on the Christmas Day truce.